We have an awesome guest on this episode. We have Chris and Eileen from Afterglow, which is a morning radio show based in the US, featured live in New York, Miami, and Los Angeles. They go over to 740,000 listeners each day. They're there to get the nation started on the right foot. You can listen to them weekdays from 7 to 10 a.m. coast to coast. Monday, they throw down. Wednesday, they feature new and rising artists. Thursday, they air Thursday throwdown. And the, the top 30 countdown to everything on the charts and finish the days off with uh, Friday's big show. Welcome, Eileen and Chris, and thanks for coming on my podcast. Hi, thank Hello. you for having us. Pleasure. How's it all going over there? It's going great. You know, the weather is actually very beautiful today. Oh, the weather is incredible so today. it's a good today. day to be in L.A. Oh, yeah. It's, a, it's always a good day to be in L.A., but today more than ever. <laughs> yeah, and you guys are heading into your summer as well, so that's amazing. Oh, yes. We're so excited for that. It's going, it's going to be an incredible time. Last week, it was uh, 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so it was wow. lovely, lovely mm-hmm. time. Uh, how has... um the pandemic affected both you just generally speaking since it hit last year um personally speaking i unfortunately i was not impacted by the pandemic in a negative way um to me it i'm a very supportive um person for small businesses and so it was really sad to see what um the pandemic did to those businesses um but personally speaking i feel like it really helped me venture off into things that i am fit for and what's best for me you know I was in the nine-to-five life Um, I was on my way up to basically just work in corporate America and I I kind of regrouped back in the pandemic and I realized you know that's not the path for me and I met Chris throughout that time and here I am on the radio show now so to me I had a really positive experience with it yeah for me it was it was pretty similar. It was overall positive, but um, naturally, um, us being a, a morning show that's usually in studio together every day, it was really hard in the beginning to figure out how are we going to be able to, to turn our mics on and, and not be in the same room. We had to, you know, come up with solutions like, you know, working with Zoom and other and Discord servers and a bunch of other satellite servers and our satellite 1718 servers. Um, and so we weren't able to see each other face to face for almost the whole beginning of the pandemic. We didn't even have the Zoom. Zoom we weren't able to use at the beginning. Um, it wasn't working for us, and and our systems were overloaded. And so for you know for us, it was a lot of just overcoming how how we can get back on the air together. And now, thankfully, as we're kind of coming out of it, um, not not totally, but as we're getting there, um, you know, it's much more rapid testing. It's much more getting tested every week. Um, we we all sit in the studio that's maybe like three hundred square feet, so we're all pretty close to each other uh, and because of that we have to really make sure that um, we're, we're being safe and so for me I think that it's really mostly affected just making sure that our team can still operate our day-to-day operations without um, any loss of, of downtime or any technical difficulties I mean one day um, one of our radio shows we had to actually do it all via phone because we all couldn't get our system to work and so one of our episodes we're all sitting on the phone live on the radio doing the doing it through a phone system instead of a our microphones that we paid too much money for in our studio. Um, and generally speaking, how is it like the actual COVID there now? So, for example, if you were to go out, is there a lot of social distancing? Is it intense still the way? I know you guys had a lot of cases. It's still the same way. Yeah. So, um, LA was averaging about fourteen thousand per day new cases for a while, which was a lot. Um, where I was in New York and New Jersey originally before this, it was only four thousand a day for all of New York. Um, and just for LA to be a small area, it's been, it's been a lot. Um, restaurants here, their tables are required to be eight feet apart instead of the traditional six feet. Um, it's very mass driven. Like you have to have your mask on at all times, unless you're eating or drinking. When your server comes back over, you have to put your mask back on. Um, then when they leave, you can take it back off. Um, you can't, you can't go out to a bar. You can't go out. You can bear, you just now recently in the past week or so can go back out to restaurants again. Um, everything else is closed still. It's still very, um, it's not as ghost town as it was, but now it's very, uh, it's very, very socially distanced, very getting tested a lot and very, um, still not business. Yeah. Cautious. Yeah. Are you guys happy to both get the vaccine when it comes out? I am personally not getting the vaccine. I, I normally don't take, uh, medicine, any medications or anything like that. I I try to go the holistic route. So I am personally not getting the vaccine. I know my mom works in the medical field and she has received it. Um, she hasn't had any negative feedback on it. And so for the most part, 
I'm not against it, just not my personal preference. Yeah, I, I will be just because of the amount I'm, I'm around people, and that I usually do get vaccinated every year from other things, so I, I will probably go that route. Sure, thanks for sharing your opinion. All right, let's just jump straight into it for the listeners. All right, who is Chris and Eileen for the listeners, individually, both? Okay. Um, so I'm Chris. Um, I'm 25. I am the owner of Afterglow, also the um the program director here. So I program all of the music for our show. Um, I program all of our shows, our commercials, all of the timing with our other team. Um, I'm also a lead host, so I I host with Eileen. Eileen is my other person. Um, Eileen is my other person who is kind of like on a um on my on my level, sorry about that. Someone had just one of our producers just walked by. Um, Eileen, I guess, is is who I work with the most on my production side of of things. Um, but I am pretty much just you know someone that loves music. I love hanging out. Um, and I love to make sure that our show can be a, a, an escape for people every morning. One hundred percent. Um, I myself, I'm my I'm Eileen. I'm twenty three years old. I've been born and raised in Los Angeles. I am a co-host on Afterglow. I also model. Um, I model for a makeup academy, and so I get my makeup done and whatnot, and that's really fun. Uh, I definitely love to express myself through um, modeling and taking pictures and whatnot. Um, I also create content for um, social media and YouTube, um, and I'm a student. I'm currently obtaining my license as an esthetician in hopes to go down the skincare route um, but yeah, for the most part, I would say the most exciting thing in my life is being on the radio show and modeling. It definitely helps, like I said, just express myself and definitely um, taps in with my creative side of my personality. And I really love to um, just dive into that world of creativity. Fantastic. Thanks for sharing. Tell me about individually both your lives growing up and how that was and how you got to where you are right now. You want to go first? Yeah. Um, so... Um, I grew up outside of Boston. Um, I lived in the suburbs, so I wasn't really around the city too, too much. Um, I pretty much spent a lot of time, you know, being outdoorsy and going outdoors and exploring. And, and I started to find a passion for acting and for music at a really young age. And um, I started getting kind of involved in it. But I didn't really know what, what I wanted to go into as far as, as a career-wise. I knew for a while I wanted to end up moving to either New York or L.A., um, so then as I, as I came, you know, a little bit older and, and, um, I turned 19, I decided to move to the New York city area alone. Um, and I pretty much just kept finding my passion for music, kept finding my passion for what I'm doing. Um, and, and just kept pushing it and pushing it. But I lived a very basic life for the most beginning of my, of my years. Nothing really too crazy. Like I said, suburban life, like white picket fence like green grass like it'll just a house like nothing crazy um there for my life um as for myself i like i said before i was born and raised in los angeles california and i was raised in a hispanic family so i grew up very traditionally actually i would say non-traditional because uh, my mother was mexican so i grew up with a single mom but she definitely held down the positions as a uh, of father and mother um she was very strict on me and so we did struggle a lot we moved from place to place and so like i said my mom was a single mom so i grew up with the intention of wanting to help my mom and do better and hopefully um create something bigger and something for our family to create a legacy and so ever since i was young i always known i wanted to do something more than the nine to five i've always known it wasn't in me um, I didn't come from money, so I definitely had to work to where I'm at now, which I'm really grateful for, but I developed my love for, um, I would say creating content and being behind the mic what, going through college. So I moved from Los Angeles to New York and there I found myself being uh, a host for everything. Um, class would star and I was up at the front. I was speaking. I had no problem taking charge in group projects and so I always known I had that personality and that little niche to um, be up front and center I wouldn't call it being what, what can you say I, I, don't, I don't call for the attention um, but I definitely feel like it suits me best I'm definitely a leader and so I have a boyfriend I've been in a relationship for almost a decade <laughs> and uh, through my boyfriend I actually met Chris and 
since I've met him and he asked me to audition for the show and be a co-host, that's when I really knew like, okay, this, this is my lifestyle is being behind the mic and it's really inspiring others around me in my neighborhood. Cause I didn't grow up in, in your typical like LA where everyone grows up knowing everyone and you just have connections. I grew up more towards the suburbs where you had to really work for what you want and need. And the people in my circle and people I've grown up with don't really look outside of the box. They're more, let's go to college and let's get a job and let's do the nine to five. And I, I love just inspiring others and letting them know that, you know, we're more than working for someone else's dream. We can, you, as long as you just put your feet on the ground and you just keep it pushing, you can get to where you want and where you, where you see yourself, you know? And so I just, I love inspiring. I love being out there. I love to let people know that the best thing in life is just be yourself. So I would say I'm a very positive and optimistic person. Amazing. And you guys are inspiring me and I'm sure the listeners. So yeah, you guys are doing great and wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> um, Tell me, have you guys done a lot of traveling uh, within America or internationally? I have. Since I was young, I was always traveling. Uh, my family is from Mexico and Colombia. So at the age of three years old, I was traveling to Guadalajara, Mexico, Cancun, um, Tijuana, Ensenada. <laughs> I've been all those places. And I've also actually went to school in Colombia um, for a couple months. And uh, I went to school there for, I would say, a, 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 a quarter of the school year. So I was there for about five to six months. And um, I left Colombia and I was, I was in Popayán, Cauca. And I have family out there. So I have some sisters and some grandmothers um, up there. I say grandmothers because everybody over there is your grandma, your sister, <laughs> your cousin. <laughs> um, so I definitely have been traveling since I was really young. Uh, and then again, I moved out from Los Angeles to New York. I was in Syracuse, New York, so I was upstate. And for the most part, that is all that I've been. Uh, although I do want to do a lot more traveling. I was actually just speaking, and I have my own podcast that I do with my friends. And I was saying how I would love to go to Australia. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there's pink sand or like pink waters over there. And I, that would be a dream of mine to go see that because I live and breathe pink. Pink is like in my soul. <laughs> <laughs> and so I try to incorporate pink in anything that I do or wear. And so um, I definitely would love to, to go to Australia. Well, you're always welcome. So oh, you thank you. you <laughs> I mean, yeah, for me, um, I do. I love traveling a lot. Um, I don't really go too internationally just because I'm not a huge fan of flying and other methods are a little bit pricey. Um, I love going down to Miami a lot. I'm, I'm in my, I would last year, I was in Miami a lot. I would do weekend trips, day trips. Um, last year, I want to say I went to Miami last year, the most I've ever gone, like in a singular year. It was, it was a lot. Um, mm -hmm. I always love coming out to LA before I even moved, um, to the West Coast. Um, even when I was living outside of Boston, I would love to drive down. I'd drive down to New York for the weekend. I'd be there for two, three days and so, so on and so forth. Um, I love, love, love traveling. I think it's fun. I love experiencing new things. And a big thing for me is I would always do it alone. And um, I have friends in, in different locations, but people, you know, I'd be traveling when people were working their nine to five. So I'd be, I'd be, you know, traveling and trying to do things. And one big thing for me was that I think traveling taught me was being able to eat alone, which I know sounds like really random, but I couldn't go to like a I wouldn't be able to go to a restaurant and get food that I really wanted because I was like, oh, I don't want to be I don't want to eat alone. And I was thinking the other day, I was at Italy, which is a place here in um, in L.A., and I was there alone after I went shopping. And I was like, you know, I would have never done this like four or five years ago because I didn't want to be that guy because it was always, oh, just go get fast food. But I didn't always want fast food. I wanted like a nice gourmet steak or a gourmet burger. I didn't want to be sitting there at this table alone like, oh, no, someone's coming. And I would get such crippling anxiety that I wouldn't be able to even just sit at a table alone. <laughs> so, yeah, that was a huge thing for me. Wow. But yeah, I'm traveling. Okay. Well, that's <laughs> well, then I'm not alone. Now you have a travel partner. <laughs> well, you're doing amazing, Chris. And you're coming you. leaps and bounds. It sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> you have real big ones. <laughs> he can, he can um, host a whole radio show, but he cannot eat alone. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Isn't that ironic? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Um, tell me actually the story specifically. So you said that, um, Eileen, that your boyfriend introduced you to. How did it all transpire, like, and where you are now, the 
the show iHeartRadio, how does it all come together? It's actually <laughs> crazy how the universe works and how our lifestyles just slide because um, my boyfriend, he makes music and he creates it. And so um, the Afterglow producers were on a hunt for new artists and trying to get them on the show. And somehow they crossed paths with my boyfriend. And Chris gave my boyfriend a follow on Instagram, and from there they connected, and they be they started sort of friendship virtually. And Chris had let us know that he was going to Los Angeles, and uh, my boyfriend, he's really kind, and he offered to pick Chris up from the airplane and take him to his house. And so yeah, which never really happened. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was, yeah. I was, yeah. Uh, he's is, like, "How are you getting home?" I'm like, "Oh, I'm going to take an Uber." He's like, "No, no, no, me and Eileen are going to pick you up." I was yeah. like, "Hey." Okay. <laughs> and I never met, met Chris before. I never even heard of him until the day my boyfriend walked in. He's like, "He's like, well, we're going to go pick up Chris." I'm like, "Who's Chris?" And he's like, oh, like, this is him. He showed me his Instagram. He's like, I love him. Like, he's really good energy. And so, so sure enough, he picked the airport port, and instantly, my boyfriend did not get a word in because Chris and I were just talking and we just connected like the And so, so from then, our friendship began and just, 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 just had, again, we, it was still COVID when he moved. It was about in November 2020. And so, 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 so our, our, our friendship just grew virtually. And then from there, he, he sent me an Instagram DM and he said randomly, like, hey, come audition for my show. And I, and I, and I said, wait, what? It's a radio show? Like, you don't understand? I've never been in, in, in radio before. before. Like, I don't even know how I sound behind the mic. And he's like, no, trust me, you're perfect. I should teach you. He's like, your energy is just amazing. He's like, you need to come try it. And so sure enough, I got myself together. I came and I was so nervous. I could almost throw up walking in here. I was I, I don't think I can have this many people listening to me. <laughs> Um, and so you have to just forget about it, honestly. That's the it big thing. is, yeah, that is very true. Now that I'm, I've done a couple shows. Now I'll, I do understand. The trick is to just put on one who's listening. Everything you're saying is gonna be a couple of about. shows. You've been on the show for three months. Oh, it doesn't feel <laughs> like that. You've been on the show for three months. Oh my god! Since we took you on, yeah. It does not feel that long. <laughs> but, but anyway, so I came and auditioned, and Chris was very, being very, very nice. So I thought he was just being what, what, what. what? I came in say Monday and then they say he's like you got the job. He's like like your show's Friday. I was like oh my my god Friday again I've never it's like like a like a domino like like a the sign and then and then yeah but sure enough I was so um it blessed and actually excited that our first show was. A um, you know you know you know you know you got you got a little white claws in you a little bit of alcohol helps ease the moment ease our nerves and we we ended up having a really awesome show I ended up connecting with my coworkers oh, 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 oh. um and we had a really awesome show and so from um here we are now and he, he actually just before this um interview he was showing how to run, run the, the whole soundboard and all this mess that's over here because he wants me to host on Friday. Yes. So here we are now, three months later, wow, and I'm yeah. hosting. <laughs> yeah, so you're going to be, she's going to be in charge of the show from our 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock hour. So if, if you guys yes. are listening to this in a few months and Eileen's not here, she didn't, didn't do good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to make my promise. <laughs> but ever since then, I mean, Chris? our friendship has grown definitely. Um, being on the show, show on a personal and professional level, and so I'm 100%. really grateful. Yeah, I'm really grateful to be yeah. in this position for sure. Hey, Chris, tell me, um, how did the whole success? Uh, I'm fascinated how, how the how this whole masterpiece, I guess, uh, 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 come, 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 generally speaking, how has, has yeah, how con, 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 master, master, please call it a shit show, but. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, so yeah, no. So um, I've been working on radio for a few years. Um, I started producing originally just music, and so I would produce some music. Um, I actually have a tattoo on my arm, which is sound waves. Um, I love music. Music is, is crazy. Uh, and I have a love for sound in general. I like. I really love cool, cool, cool sounds. And I loved how radio sounded. I love when you'd hear like Slim Slim Gomez is introing something or just and and it was this like audio edited crazy sweet sweet sweeper sweeper package like crazy like indent or like intro and i kind of kind of producing some of those and submitting them to places and and long story i ended up become, becoming some friends with some people um and um actually july 2nd is going to be the um it's basically going to be our anniversary of, um for our this is our fourth season um which is ironic friday so that'll be really exciting so our our fourth we're essentially going into our third because our first season was really caught into one year 
Um, so we've been doing this for about three years now, which doesn't feel real. Um, this began in, in 2019, which is in, in, in. Um, and so I just basically had, I had an intern at the time that I was working with and I, and I said, Hey, why don't you, uh, like, why don't we do something exciting? And, and I, and we had some nice ideas back and forth and, and this and that. And it was to be on a portion of someone else's live radio show. And then I was like, well, I don't know, like, I don't, I don't know if like this is something we want to do or this and that. And then it just kind of blew up and, and we started taking over a different spot. We got more, more time, time and then our show went from 15 minute segment, because our show, our, show, our show was a 15 minute wow. segment, to a now two hour, five days a week, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, three hour, three hour show um, from five, five days a week in three major cities. And the journey, it just exploded over COVID. We just kept pushing and pushing it. And we showed that, um, um, of course, we're a small business, but we showed that we could pushing and keep going forward. And, and that's how we were able to kind of um, make sure that what, what we what we do every day is is, is for the right reasons. And, and that's how we got here. And that's that's what happened. Amazing. Yeah, that's wow, 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 that's just truly amazing. Um, What is you, you both individually each day? Hmm. What inspires me is to know that I am living the best life that I possibly can. By the time I reach 80 and I have my children and my grandkids, all I want to know is that I lived my life to the fullest and I'm not, not, not driven by money. Although it is what gets us throughout our life, that is not my number one that leads me. I don't take opportunities based off of um, I, I do, I move very strategically in the way of if it's going to make me happy, if it's going to, um, make me better and you need to need to a higher position for where I want to be in my life, that's what I'm going to do. And so I would say, not that I per per personally inspire myself, but I hope to, I'm in some hope, 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 and that I'm just living the best possible life that I can. Yeah. I, that's, I think that's true. I think, I think you're doing that pretty well. <laughs> yeah. I think for me, um, I'm just inspired mostly by, um, our listeners and our team, because we everyone lives through all these crazy stories, and um, you can get, get up every morning, morning and talk to hundreds of people and help shape their day and shape their life, and knowing that something I say could completely change their whole weekend or their whole day or their outlook on an issue. Um, and reasons, and for me, um, I think I think that's really what what inspires me. Yeah, and I would like to add, and, 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 um, because like he just said something tr tr trigger this is, is that. I, when I'm sp like doing this interview, or sp speaking to um, my coworkers or people that I work with or people who personally um, DM me on social media, and they, they are inspired by me, that inspires me is that I'm inspiring them or watch watching you that you have your own podcast, you are starting something that you love to do, you take your own personal time to do. Um, that's what really how how makes me keep going because I see you know I'm not alone. Everyone wants to be a go getter. Everybody wants to follow their dreams, and, and that to me is inspiring. Just feeling that energy that going out, going out, going out after what they would like to go after. You know, yeah, a hundred percent. I think I was, I was 100 percent like just spot on nailed it. I think it's thinking, yeah, yeah. You guys are inspiring me, so you can just feel <laughs> that energy and those vibes. Like, 100%. you know, I really I appreciate that you. because we are young and we are younger, younger than you, and so to hear it from someone who is older than us and more wise, um, it it honestly is a pat on the back because a lot of older people definitely like to look gen 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 generation and they like to think that we we don't want to help our community at all and that we're selfish that at least those are the things that i hear from some and so um we we we, we are obviously we still so much more life to live you know and so learning, 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 growing growing right, look, look at the trajectory you're on look at, look at where you're at look at look at look at look at the just don't even imagine what the future <laughs> oh you 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 you, you have no idea what's ahead for us that's the worst that's gonna be easy easy happening Oh, that's cool. Um, what's the best memories you've had in your life that you can recall? Oh, that's, a, that's such a good question. Yeah, that's a hard. Honestly, I think most of mine come from like being around on the show. I think. Oh my god. I think. I mean, because we've been able to do some crazy things. I think one of my favorites was being able to. Um, we were on like over top the Empire State Building in a helicopter with this company called Fly Ion. And I was hosting this radio thing with the Empire State Building, and we're changing the colors of the building to the Empire State Building to music. 
And that for me was such a full circle, crazy, unbelievable one because it was my love for the company Fly Nine. It was my love for the Empire State Building, which I've always looked at as a huge thing, you know, not being from New York. And then um, my love for radio and my love for music and my love for like events. And so all of it came together. And I just remember sitting there like I'm literally over top of the Empire State Building looking at what's happening, like looking at what's happening below us. I perfectly just timed all this music and all the lights to make sure the building is lit up correctly to the music we're playing on, on, you know, of course, the radio and, of course, from the Instagram live. And it was absolutely wild. I think that for me was my most crazy and exciting memory. But not even that, just, um, you know, being able to share moments like announcing my um, executive future's pregnancy on the air or being able to announce my move to L.A. on the air. It, it's very... um. A lot of my moments are, are with our listeners and being able to share our daily lives and, and being honest and open with our listeners. We have fun, but I like when you really get to, to show them who we are. And that, yeah. for me, is, is what I think my favorite part is. How old were you when you did the Empire State Building? Um, I was 24. Yeah, what 24-year-old do you hear doing that? Getting on a helicopter <laughs> and controlling <laughs> the lights on the Empire State Building. That is so crazy. Well, Amazing. to clarify, to clarify, yeah. I was controlling the music to the lights. The lights are already pre-programmed. Okay, the music. <laughs> the lies um you know chris is a big inspiration definitely the things that he has accomplished and so young um he definitely pushes me to try to be to that level <laughs> um but my most memorable memory that i have in my life i have a couple um i would definitely say mm, number one is getting my dog with my boyfriend like i said um i'm i'm about to be 10 years with my boyfriend and so he had got me a dog three years ago and it's crazy what an animal what type like the animals that they, they how they impact your life is what i'm trying to say um it's crazy that they you, they have these little personalities and they really like cater to you and your needs and to have some little fur baby uncontrollably love you it's just a different feeling and so my dog definitely has to be number one and Number two, I am not saying this because my boss is next to me, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, but in all honesty, when he texted me, like, you got the job, and then he called me, I felt so euphoric because I've always called myself the black sheep in my life. Um, everywhere I've gone, I've always been, like, an outcast, and I've always just been um, just judged, and I just always felt like the black sheep. And so when it, when he called me, he said that I got it and he had like so many applicants and so many interviews, it kind of validated for me to stop doubting myself. And he, that, that feeling of him, like letting me know I got it. I just felt euphoric. I just felt like I'm on top of the world. I can get this. Like if, if he wants me and he's worked with so many people and he's done so much, many other things, then I need to start believing in myself and I need to start seeing what other people see in me. And so I, I, that's super memorable for me because I, I got Aww. to see, my, yeah, I just got to see myself from someone else's POV and it was, it was really nice. Well, everyone on our show loves you, so you're good. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> well, that's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. That's great. You're asking the you awesome questions, great, so thank you. Well, thank you for answering them. You know, <laughs> it's, it's amazing. It's amazing insights too. If you were both 18 again, individually we'll go again. And you could change or do things, anything differently. What would you change and why? Um, yeah, I don't think I would change anything. I think it's really sh my eighteen and nineteen. You, you actually, I, honestly, everything from when I was like sixteen up until like legitimately twenty four, and like I know it's a crazy little range. Yeah. Um, was a lot. I learned a lot, and I don't think I would change a, a singular thing. I even, I even like eat like one less bagel. I wouldn't change a singular <laughs> thing. <laughs> I don't. I don't think I would. I don't know. I think it taught me a lot. I think it really built me up. Um. And I, I learned a ton in my creative careers and a ton in my more corporate careers. So I, I don't think I would, yeah, I don't think I'd change a thing. What about you? <laughs> I like that. I definitely don't think I would change it. Um, I would definitely love to give myself different advice. Like if I can go back to my 18-year-old self and be like, look, look at me and listen to me, I would definitely tell myself to stop um, thinking I can do it all. Um, because I used to, I, my parents think I'm a rebel, although I was a good child. I did not get pregnant early. I have no kids. I did not go the drug route. So I am a good child, but I definitely went against my parents, um, as to going and partying and going out, I would sneak out. And so I would tell my 18 year old self to not think that I know it all. Um, because I left my house really young. Um, 
I was 17 years old when I moved out of my mom's house and I went to New York and I kind of just fought off my parents. And so it's not a, a regret. It's just something that I wish I would have listened because I had to learn it the hard way. You know, I had to go through times in my life where I didn't want to listen. I was being stubborn. And so I completely got cut off from my parents. And I wish I could go back and just tell myself, like, take it one step at a time. Listen to your mom. You know, your mom doesn't <laughs> want the bad, the bad, like bad for you, you know? And yeah. so... I was really stubborn when I was young. Oh, I was I was very stubborn. Too. <laughs> but for the most part, that is that there's not really much I would um, change about my life. I feel like it's definitely molded me into the person I am today, and I I feel like I'm a lot more mature and wiser than any other 23 year old because of the things I've been through, and so I definitely wouldn't regret it. Yeah, definitely, 100 percent agree. I can see your professionalism, the way you guys talk, as you articulate everything. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> Tell me. You. About the TV show that you guys are working on. Oh yes, um, behind oh, the mic. Yes. <laughs> um, so we were, we were really out of the. So we've been working on this um reality show for a while. Um, we actually had to pause it because of COVID. So wh- the, when's the last time we filmed? Was it? Feb? Uh, it was like yeah, last month. February sure. or January? We haven't filmed in a few in a few months. Um, it's basically not actually about Afterglow. It's um a look into my life, Eileen's life, Sergio's life. Um, our producers, Danley Life. Um, it's it's very uh, it's very interesting because we we all live. I mean, my, my, I feel like Eileen and I's lives alone are already crazy enough. Mm-hmm. So um, we're taking people into a real true look. Um, when the mics are off, like what really goes on. Um, so we're calling it behind the mic. Um, might change that. So if but um, we're in the we're in our pilot stages right now. Um, it's gonna be so much fun yeah. because. <laughs> But when we're not filming, we're like, where are the cameras? Because Uh-oh. the things that happen in here, people deserve to see. Because we are hilarious. And, you know, I'm not tooting my own horn here. <laughs> no, it was... It's not because I say good <laughs> jokes. It's because I'm probably a hot mess. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's comical. You know, it's something where people can relate to. We are so young. I feel like the reality shows that you see now are people who are established fully into their lives and careers. They have a, a, a crap ton of money where they can go and throw like million dollar parties where here you're seeing us behind the scenes of trying to grow this radio show to next levels and hopefully this is going to be a show where people can relate to us and they know that on air personalities and any other personality any other content creator are just like them we go through the same emotions and the same um paths that everyone goes through when it comes to interacting with people and being in this type of industry and they have no idea what goes on when the mic like during commercial breaks Mm -hmm. Oh, you have n- no one has any <laughs> idea what happens. It's me just screaming or me losing my mind or Eileen being like, I can't deal with this right now. Or, or like, or, when I, like, or like Sarah being like, Oh, fuck this shit. I hate it all. And then, it's, <laughs> and then it's, like, it's, it's just the other group. I mean, we're a team of 25 people. So when you, when you get that many people involved in a, in a creation, you are, <laughs> it really goes down. And so we're hoping that that is going to be a way that we can really see, um, the, the 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 drama that really really truly happens in our everyday life fully unscripted and when the mics are off <laughs> literally what happens excellent i can't wait to see when it comes out oh it's gonna be crazy <laughs> um I know, i'm looking forward to it what um what does the future look like for after the life oh wow the tv show and what you think like? what the future has no idea what yeah we um world. we're working on a few music festivals actually since the last time that we talked um, so we're hoping to get those up and running as obviously COVID restrictions um, lift up. Um, we're working on a giveaway to give away some flights and some airfare to Miami from anywhere in the U.S. Um, to give them a nice real vacation. Uh, we're working with a lot more on the rise artists, a lot more brands that don't that don't really get out there. And and um, it's our our goal for 2021. Um, and I think we've been doing so good as now we're in our third month. Um, is going to be just to to really just keep getting people's days going off on the right foot, keep scaling our brand. But um, pretty much what's ahead is just a bunch of craziness, a bunch of our team growing more. Um, we just signed a new office space, so we have another office space. Um, so we're just looking to grow and get more people involved and have ways that we can make their lives better, for I think a, a use of a better word. That's amazing. Thank you. Chris and Eileen, thank you for coming to my podcast podcast sorry i do appreciate it i wish you both all the success with everything you're doing with after play live i mean your personal and professional lives aside from that i can see as we discussed like the amazing things and everything you're doing yeah i just wish you nothing but success in the future 
Oh, well, thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. <laughs> no, thank you for having us. It's been an honor. Um, you're really great with these questions. I am definitely inspired by all of your questions. And so I really appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you for thank having you us. Thank you very much. <laughs> Pleasure. We'll, we'll, we'll keep in touch in the future. Yeah, awesome. please. Sounds great.